Hey guys, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. Guys, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And I sure hope the sound is working. I was having kind of a little bit of uh, a sound glitch there prior to coming on. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Guys, I've got just one box today. And then later on, we're going to talk a little bit about the Deadpool 3 film. There has been a little leak. I don't know if you want to call it a leak or not. That's come out of Japan. Uh, it doesn't tell us a whole hell of a lot, but it gives us a little little something to talk about. So we will talk a bit about the Deadpool 3 uh, movie uh, very soon. And you know as well as I do. You know how I feel about the films. I think that our, uh, the excitement, good. Thanks, Astro Lucky. Uh, perfect, Sam. Thank you. I do believe that the films have, um, now, do, do they, do they, do they, did the films actually increase the, the value of books? I don't know about that, but it certainly certainly does help with the excitement in the hobby. When the movies are, are coming out regularly and they're good, people are the collectors are happy, they're 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 happy that their favorite characters are being showcased up on the big screen. And uh, it does it does kind of uh, trickle down to the to the to us guys in the comic shops. And uh, yeah, it just it just it just like I guess it just improves the mood, as it were, for comic book collectors. Guys, like I said, twenty five books. Let's get started. And before I do, guys, if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. By doing so, you can actually join in the conversation in just a few moments. When I go over to the chat room, you can come on here and ask questions about comic book pressing, comic book cleaning, comic book you know submissions to CGC or any 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 third party grading company. You can ask those questions right here live with me but you have to be a subscriber. So again, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the like button too. If you haven't done so already, there's 13 or 18 of you in here right now, only seven likes, eight likes. Hit that like button, guys. I'd certainly appreciate it. Let's get going. First off, we have one of my favorite villains in the MCU, which was done bad, done wrong in the MCU. Let me go over to my overhead cam. There it is. And we have a, uh, yeah, we've got the um, Avengers 196. And it's an 8.0, and it's a direct copy. Let's see what else I have here. What other goodies do I have? I'm not even sure what's in here, guys. Uh, we have a restored copy of X-Men 94. Now, this is they're claiming that it has a small amount of color touch on cover. Uh, and there's a little bit of a tear in the back as well, too. I, don't, I can't imagine someone color touching this, but that's what they say in a 5 Point five. Oh. I want to check these bo these these slabs though because this box had a big was kind of crushed on the top. I'm like, oh great. But so far so good. We got a beautiful copy of uh Marvel Super Superhero Secret Wars number eight with that awesome custom label and a 9.8. We follow that one with a uh Amazing Spider-Man 316. Also with a custom label, and also with a nine point. Whoops! Don't hit that. I almost hit. I almost hit that overhead cam cable again. Remember the other time it kind of froze. I don't want that to happen. Here we go. So a nice copy of uh, three sixteen and a nine point as well. We've got a three forty here. Oh look at that! We got a three forty. Uh, um. Hulk 340, and this one's in a 9.4, also with the custom label. Here's a really nice book, guys. We've got a another an ASM 252, not the Canadian price variant that we all saw a few weeks ago, but the second best, right? Look at that, guys. It is a newsstand copy of uh, Amazing Spider-Man 252. Now. If you guys are fans of the custom labels, there's been a little bit of a delay. If your books are not back as quickly as, say, some others are or other of your books are, it could be because the custom labels, especially those Spider-Mans, the, the, the ones they kind of reintroduced, the one that we see, was there any on here? No, I don't think it's on here. The New York Cityscape custom label, they ran out. So that kind of slowed down uh, operations in terms of the custom labels over at CGC, but I was told, I called yesterday, apparently all the labels are in stock, but they have a bit of a backlog now. They're trying to catch up on those, uh, on getting those custom labels into those slabs. That's a beautiful copy there of a new stand. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, and of course, this, this, uh, we've got a 9.8 copy of um, uh, the deluxe edition of Wolverine 88. 
right there, and that's from our thumbnail we see today. Um, what was I going to say about that? Now, now we will talk a little bit about the Deadpool movie. This is a, just a box of 25. We'll get through the 25, then we'll get, and I'll show you what I, I have an actual image of the leak from Japan. Maybe you guys have seen this already. It's not a whole heck of a lot, but we can read into it. So we'll have some fun with that in just a few moments. But yeah, so a nice 9.8 copy of Wolverine 88. I believe it's the first, uh, is it the first meeting of Deadpool and Wolverine or the first cover of, of, of Wolverine and Deadpool? I, I always forget that. I think it might be the first cover. Anyways, let's get, well, you guys are talking up a storm over there. Let's go over to the chat window again um, and uh, see what you guys are saying and who's here today as I pack these guys up. Sam was, was Sam the first one here? I think he was. And John Sherwood coming in second. Roger Fleming. How you doing, Roger? How you doing? Good to see you. Good evening. Hope all is well. Roger, your books are over there right now, so they should be back pretty soon. Astro Lucky. Hey, everyone. How's it going? How do you doing, Astro Lucky? Arranger's here, too. Bad Hombre's here. Buenas noches. How you doing, my friend? Thank you, guys. Let me know I'm nice and loud and clear. Frank says, hello. And how goes it, Kevin? It goes not too bad. Feel a little bit run down today guys i was at the shop today a couple of clients came in today to, to drop off books and you know i was feeling kind of peaked a little bit i wanted to just get home and lie down i did that i feel a bit better now after having a big a big dinner um yeah uh, sam says for every thumbs up i will go a week without mentioning asm there you go guys 12 of you and well, only 12 likes 26 in the room hit that like button guys do me that favor it does it does help with my analytics a little bit the more likes i get the more apt YouTube will be to show off uh, my channel to, uh, to newbies, which is what I really want, okay? Um, and Frank says, hope that ASM is mine. I don't think it is, Frank. Yours is almost done, I believe. It's it's already in the, um, I think yours are in the, yours in the final stage. And then Frank says, need the 250 custom label Canadian to come in. Yeah, it'll be in soon. Soon. As your lucky doc, when will you be getting the December? Some, oh, boy. Ooh. We're going into November. Nippur is back. She's on vacation right now. She's back at the end of this week. Then we're gonna ha we're gonna hammer it into full gear, um, and we're gonna try to get through a lot of books. I want I want to get our turnaround time at, in shop to around two and a half, like to eight weeks. That's where I want to be. Right now we're more like twelve weeks, give or take. Um, so we're getting there. Books like I gave out books on sa on Saturday to people that came into the shop, and they were exactly like four months. So I, I've been I've been quoting three to four months, and we were right there. So that's good. I'm glad I'm keeping I'm I'm keeping into what I tell people. The estimates I give I'm giving people tend to be right. Now those estimates are just estimates. Sometimes beyond our control, things happen at at uh, at CGC. If you're li listening to me last week, we were talking about Bart's order, and you know Bart had a book had a book a, an order of books that were supposed to come back to him in November, and he just got them yesterday, like this week. So that was beyond my control, right? Unfortunately. So, um, but we're getting there. We're moving. We're moving right along. We're moving right along. I just had a huge. I just had a huge order again. In I sent two huge orders. I did about a hundred and some odd books this week, and about hundred and fifty books the week prior. So there's a lot of books at CGC now, which means a lot of unboxings coming up. Um, Spiro says hello. Hello, Spiro. Good to see you. Moneyball, how you doing, buddy? How's it going? Good to see you. All right, all right. Guess you guys want some more books. Well, here we go. Here we go. All right. I love, oh, look, wow, a lot of nine eights today so far. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. Let's go back to the uh, overhead cam here. Let's go to the main overhead cam. Boom. Nice 9.8 copy of Mega Man number three. First appearance of Lobo. Oh, Freaking look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> Teen Titans number 44 and a 9.8. Gotta love it. Keep those nine eights going. And another. Wow, another one. Holy cow. Maybe, I don't know if this is yours or not. Hold on. Is this yours, Frank? Is that yours? Is that yours? I don't remember if we... I got to see if that's somebody different. Because Frank picked up one of those. I'm not sure if I did a reholder on that or not. Let's see. No, I... Oh. Yeah, it's got to... That's got to be Frank's. This is a reholder. Right here, this is a reholder, so I would assume this is Frank's book that was reholdered, sent back. Frank picked this up a few weeks ago, and then it did not have the custom label. And Frank is a custom label nut. He's crazy for the custom labels. So off it went, right back to CGC. I believe that's his. Beautiful copy. I want to see. I'll show you. 
Where is it? Right there. See, if I had that, Frank, I'm, I'm gonna put this in your head now. Maybe you already have one. I would wanna have the pair. I'd wanna have the, the newsstand copy and the Canadian price variant copy. And then I get a copy of the, the uh, direct copy as well. I have all three in 9.8. Look at that. Just looks great together. Anyways, just trying to spend your money, <laughs> Frank. But I, I, they look good. They look damn good. All right. Moving right along. We had a G.I. Joe number one. And that's a newsstand edition. No cracks, which is good. That's in a 9.6. We got a Transformers number one, direct edition. Hmm. All right, nothing wrong with that. Nine point eight. Wolverine number one, limited series. Nine point six. We see this one a lot too, guys. This book has really become a, a very common book here at the show. I'll do one more book. We'll go back to the chat. Well, well, well. Look what finally came back. All right, we'll talk about this really quick. We'll talk about this really quick. Hold on, let me go to my main camera here. Okay, so a, a long time back, a long time back, I um, uh, Vince sent me in an order quite a ways back, and Vince got a lot of a, a lot of ASM books in a nine eight, and then one came back with a um a note that said the book was miscut or some freaking I don't know, but they didn't, they, they, they didn't, uh, they, they, I don't think they even graded the book. They just sent it back. If I remember correctly, or they gave it like a green label or a, something. It was, I have to ask I, it's such a long time ago. I totally forgot. Anyways, I looked at the book and I'm like, what are they talking about? This book does not have any of that. So I said, let's send it back in again. I sent it back in again. And Look at that, Abracadabra. The book that some grader said had some miswrap or miscut. I have to find the label for it. It's probably over here somewhere. Um, come on, CGC. Come on, CGC graders. What's up with that? You know, why Why are you saying, you know, I think I, I think it came back oh, like an eight or something like that. And it said it had like a miswrap or there was some flaw with the book. And me and Vince are looking at the book and we're like, what are they nuts? This book was a 9.8 contender. So I just waited a couple of weeks, shipped it back, and look at that, a 9.8. <sighs> See, that kind of shit bothers me. That kind of stuff bothers look, look, we're all human. You know? What I should do is find the label that this came with and send it and say, look what I did, and tell them. And maybe they'll give me my money back. I think I paid, I think I paid twice to have this book graded. Which is ridiculous. Anyways, there you go. 9.8. Congratulations, Vince. <laughs> you wait. And Vince has been waiting a long time for this one. This book sat there forever because of this Spider-Man label. Another one that they were out of stock on. And they finally got it in. So that's kind of cool. Now my stack is high here. I'll go back to you guys. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da, chat window. Boom. There it is. And um, yeah, big book. Darn right, Astro Lucky. That's the Canadian price variant. It sure is. Roger, wow, congrats, Frank. Yes, you're welcome. It was pretty, pretty crazy books, guys. Pretty crazy books. Got some more biggies coming in here. Now, I'm probably not going to do a one-on-one -on -one this week, in case you're wondering. I, you know, I did two. I did a one-on-one -on -one last week. I think the week before. And I'm kind of. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to do it every single week. I'll just do it once. Whenever I have somebody lined up, I'll come in. But I do plan on bringing some of you guys on the show too. Um, I got to sit down with a calendar and just kind of um, put it together. I just haven't had an opportunity to do that just yet. Um, so yeah, I am going to send out, there are a bunch of orders that are finished as well. I'm going to send out a text. I'm going to try to send out a text after the stream tonight to those people whose books are ready for pickup because there are quite a few. Um, yeah. All right. So there we go. Let's go back. Batman, Fortnite, 9.8, foil edition. You probably won't be able to see this very well. I'll show it to you like this. There you go. That's pretty cool. I'll try to put it down on the uh, 
on the slab here and see or on the on the table. Ah, that, that doesn't look too bad. There you go. It's a pretty cool book. Right there, 9.8. We got a 5.5 copy for all you Silver Age nuts out there who are just waiting for you. Well, yeah, it's still silver, I believe. We've got a 5.5 Silver Surfer number four. We've got uh, Fantastic Four Annual 2. Yeah, look at that, guys. Look how clean that back is. Thanks, Charlo. <laughs> uh, Canadian Edition in a number 2 and a 5-0. It's a pretty popular Doctor Doom cover nowadays. we got a Daredevil number 7. This is a first appearance of the red suit in a 4.5, off-white to white. Haven't seen that book at all. We've... That was a very common book for a while there. Have not seen it for quite some time. Another a Mega Man number three in a 9.8 white pager. Nothing wrong for that. Frank says, <clears throat> if the 252 finally came in, maybe that 316 could be mine. That's all we were waiting for. Yeah, but the 252 went in as a, as a reholder and the 316 went in as a, to be graded. So they'd be, they'd be in different... Um, they wouldn't be done at the same time. I'm pretty sure I checked your 316 yesterday. And uh, you also have, I think, I don't want to guess. I'm not sure. You have a 316 that's getting reholdered. Sorry, that's getting graded. And you also had a Spider-Verse book too, but I don't remember that's getting reholdered or graded. I can't remember. So, again, when I'm doing this show, I have a hard time remembering all the details, but I'm pretty sure your 316 is still there. I'm still putting money on it. It's going to come back a 9.8 though. It did need a little press and we did press it and it got rid of a couple little flaws that I saw. All right, let's put these babies away here. Um, Rob Bin says, Doc, let me put this over here so you guys can see this while I... Uh, do you accept CG submissions without pressing? I can do that for you. Um, I may charge you a, a very small paperwork fee uh, to do the uh, the entering. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I, I could... Yeah, give me a call, Rob, and we'll figure it out. But yeah, happy to do that for you. Happy to do that for you. Spider-Verse, yes, Reholder. I think the Spider-Verse... I don't remember. I can't remember. I know we're waiting on two or three book series. I, I think the Spider-Verse is back already, to be honest. I think I saw that in a previous episode, but my brain is mush with these shows. I can't remember. All right. All right. Let's keep going here. Right, put those over here. All right. We have a Hulk. Number one from 2008. First Red Hulk. What the hell? What the hell? Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm just in shock at how they seem to be manhandling these books. I can see a dent right there. But wouldn't it was that wasn't that wouldn't have been sent like that? Anyways, nine point six. Very nice copy of Heir to the Empire. Number one, I like to see these books in 9.8, don't you? Pretty book, for sure. We also have The Last of Us, number one, uh, also in a 9.8, right there. And Black Panther, number three, uh, first appearance of Tosh Tosin Odu. In a 9.8. Bing, bing, boom. Whoops, whoops, right there. And I think... Oh! <laughs> One of my books came back. This book and these two books were with that, with Vince's books. Now, Vince, I sent... When we took the book out, we sent it back. I had another gift book I sent in. And this is from Mike. Mike gifted this book to me. Um... Uh, a few, quite a while back, way before Christmas, and I've been waiting for this sucker forever. And I also see one of, I believe, Rob's books, Rob N's books. He's been waiting for this book too. A really cool copy of ASM 300. It's a facsimile, I guess, or foil edition. 
freaking love these. Look at that. And a 9.8 with the custom with the label. It looks awesome. So that's that's actually one of mine. I got a bunch of these now. Thanks to Mike. Again, Mike, thank you very much. Looks really, really good. And to go along with another with the more of the Venom theme, we have um, Venom Lethal Protector number no, two, number one. Uh, the Shattered Comics Edition. Finally got this back. Rob has been waiting since like I think we've been waiting since like November for these books. Um which was absolutely ridiculous. It was one of those things. And they told me it was because of the labels. I think the Venom labels at that point. Oh shit, you can't see any of this. Sorry, we'll go backwards. Uh, <laughs> overhead cam. Yeah, I just, <laughs> just caught that. Um, I'll go backwards now. This is Rob's book. Rob's book's been, um, we've been trying to get this back for a long time. November, he's been waiting for this. Custom label, now it's back. Here's the book that Mike got me as a gift. And if you were the show, if you saw the show last week, he uh, got me, I believe, the... They're back here, actually. Oh, they're right behind me. I'll show you. Come here. And again, I don't know if they're worth grading or not, but I just I just really like them because they're just they're just so, you know, they, they really go go they, they make the book look almost original, right? So I absolutely aside from the, you know, the little the little barcode there. It looks pretty damn close, right? The back advertising is all the same. I love that. So the giant size X-Men I have, which is cool. And then I've got a foil copy of the ASM 300 you just saw. I'll put this over here. And I also have a copy of the Hulk 181 foil. And again, with the, the facsimile cover, it's almost identical which is pretty sick. I love that foil. I mean, this this would look great with, you know, a statue, with a sideshow statue, or the Hulk statue, or a Wolverine statue. Love that. And that's probably how I will display it, because I do have a Wolverine and a Hulk statue to go with this. Um, and I also have, he also got me the Batman, uh, actually, you know, 181 right here. Again, pretty sick. Not only that, it has the back cover, exactly the same. I love these. Um, and that one as well, which is cool. So he gave me four of these and I have them all back now. So I'm very happy to get them back. And again, Mike, thank you so much. They're really pretty books and they're going to look great when I put them on display with some of my statues that I have. Uh, our, our TV surround is totally empty right now. I think my wife is just waiting for me to put up some comic book related statues. Wouldn't you think? I think so. Anyways, the Black Panther. I don't know if we saw these ones or not, guys. Uh, the Black Panther number uh, three. I'm not sure if the camera was uh, off at that time. And then The Last of Us, of course. Number one right there. Nine, eight. So this, this book is actually a good example. If you watched my show a few weeks, I was talking about the ripples on these new, the new paper. You know, you get a book like, like this, for example. And you've got... There, that's a good shot right there with the light. It's very, a very... If you know this book, it's it's a thicker cover, right? It's not cardstock, but it's 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 a much heavier uh, paper stock on this. You'll notice there's no ripples. There's no ripples. The ink is on the paper, and the paper can handle the ink, right? However, on the new books, like like this one, you can see tons of ripples, right? Look at that. That rippling. CGC will still give nine eights for that. Now, yeah, we can get them out, and we have get we oftentimes do get them out. Um, sometimes they come back, uh, but we've learned that they just, they, they, they accept it. They know that these books have those, the, and I'm talking, the ripples are, are the ones that kind of go, they're, they're like, um, they're vertical, right? It's because the paper is, I don't want to say it's bad quality paper or cheap paper, but it kind of is. It's kind of like a very thin, almost like a tissue and when they put the heavy inks, like dark inks like this on there, it saturates the paper and it causes that ripple. Now, by humidifying it very well and giving it a good press, you can usually remove that. But again, if you have a book like, you know, we just were talking with Frank about his first uh, um, Spider Gwen. If you have that book and you have ripples on that book and you're concerned, oh man, it's not 9.8 because of those ripples. No, that book will still could still get a 9.8 with the ripples. Now, of course, the other the rest of the book has to be in good shape, but it's acceptable. They, they know that the, the current paper, those are inherently problems that you see with, 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 these, with these books. So they're not digging books. They shouldn't be digging, digging books 
for ripples like that because it's it's caused from the paper and the heavy inks that are put on it. Okay, anyways. Sorry to go off on a tangent there. We also have I Love Again, just as I love this book. I have a, I have a lower grade copy of this. Not a 9.8, I'm afraid. And of course, the Hulk one, which I showed you. There you go. And do more bags. I should have another bag. Oh, I must have used one up. All right, there you go. 25 books. We're not done yet, guys. We're going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about the Deadpool movie. We'll go for about, what, half hour? Not even about 20, 20, 25 minutes or so. Let's talk a little bit about the Deadpool movie. Because there's no other real MCU film uh, slated to come out from now until... Um, from now until at all this year. And I think it's an August release, if I remember correctly. So it's a summer release of Deadpool 3. Could this be the movie that finally gives us, you know, some semblance uh, uh, back to the MCU after this last couple of years of just up and down? We've talked about, you know, a lot of you have already talked to me about what you, how you felt about the movies. Most people I speak to are not... Uh, have not been very satisfied with their movie-going experience when they've seen the the MCU movies. But the Deadpool film is something that um, everyone is kind of excited about. Let's have a look and see what... This is out of Japan right here. Marvel Studios Japan has shared a new synopsis. Now, again, guys, this is not <laughs> a huge spoiler, so don't worry. Uh, a synopsis for Deadpool 3 out of Japan right here. That effing irresponsible hero Deadpool will change the history of the MCU with Wolverine. There you go. It's not much, right? It's not much. What do you think? What does that mean? You guys in the chat room, spark it up. Well, you can spark it up if you want to, but spark up conversations, what I'm trying to say. What do you think that means? We know he's irresponsible, um, but the big thing is we'll change the history of the MCU with Wolverine. Does that mean that Everything since Endgame that has been kind of panned and uh, picked at by the fans will be rectified by by Ryan Reynolds. Now, if you guys saw the end of, I think it was, was it Deadpool, Deadpool 1, I believe, right? Or was it Deadpool 2? I think it was Deadpool 1 where he had the ability, no, with Cable, <clears throat> Deadpool 2. When he went back in time and he... And he did all those things for, you know, he killed the green, you know, he shot Ryan Reynolds before he could release Green Lantern. And uh, he went and shot uh, his, the old version of Deadpool from Wolverine Origins, I think it was. He went back and undid, you know, stopped terrible things from happening. Is that the kind of humor we're going to get in this Deadpool 3 movie? And is Deadpool going to kill the Marvel Universe? What do you think is? <laughs> Rob Bin says, the big question, however, Kevin, is will Taylor Swift play Dazzler I I still think she will be if they don't I think they're crazy you know even in a really quick cameo I, I, like I don't think I, I think this movie is going to be filled to the brim with cameos and listen we listen it's total fan service and we all love we all love the cameos don't we so yeah bring them on the problem with cameos, though, as we saw in, um, in in Doctor Strange, is if they're not utilized properly. You know, when you we, we talked about Spider Man No Way Home, and like many of you, I was really in. Now, some people didn't like the merging of all these different Peter Parkers or Spider Men. I I actually didn't mind it, and and one of the reasons why I did not mind it, and I said this before, is because you know you had. Um, each Spider-Man, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, and the Tom Holland Spider-Man all played integral roles in that movie, as did, you know, the Green Goblin, as did Doc Ock. You know, some of these villains were given a lot of screen time, a lot of, a lot of, uh, their, their, their presence was very, very important in this movie. So, yes, it was cameos, it was fan service to the nth degree, but it was actually well put together. The story was... Ac with Doctor Strange to boot as well. It was a really fun movie. Unlike the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness where, you know, they, they threw us all these cameos in really quickly, um, but they decided Sam Raimi, whether it was Sam Raimi or whoever, I don't know who, again, I don't know who has a final say on this, you know, was was it, a, they did, they weren't able to give us um, a real good experience with those, with those cameos. Black Bolt, Professor X, 
uh, Agent, you know, uh, Peggy Carter, and of course, Mr. Fantastic. Who everybody was waiting to see John Krasinski dress as as Mr. Fantastic. They were gone in less than ten minutes, and then a lot of a lot of screen time was given to America and uh, whatever Doctor Strange's girlfriend's name was again. I forget, but you know. That, I thought, was a, such a missed opportunity. I was so excited for that movie. I thought it was going to be the continuation of, of the, of the multiverse, uh, sorry, of, of No Way Home. But unfortunately, it wasn't. And it's, it, really, it really was a letdown. And then after that, it just kind of went down. So perhaps Deadpool will, will play more with, uh, with the Spider-Man um, way of looking at it, where they actually give these characters a little more to do. And of course have some fun along the way killing off characters that we don't like i can't imagine what he's gonna do with the eternals maybe he'll do something with that big giant um uh what do you call it uh in the ocean in the indian ocean the big uh celestial that's frozen in the indian ocean that no one's ever talked about since the eternals came out maybe he'll do what do you think what's gonna happen uh sam says saying that something will change the history of marvel is said way too often yes but do they mean it this time (laughs) <laughs> do they mean it this time anthony wheeler says he's going to kill off the fox marvel universe which is why we are getting all of them back interesting anthony interesting huh you think they're bringing back the fox characters only to kill them off and then restart the mcu with new x-men or new mutants Maybe. Have you heard that from somewhere else? Or is that just your own speculation? That is interesting. I, I, I don't know if that's the case, though. Because the lack the lack of mutants, or the lack of the presence of mutants in the MCU was very noticeable, obviously, right? People always ask, well, during during the, you know, the the... the, the the, the Thanos fighting, the war with Thanos. And all. Where were the X-Men? Where were the X-Men during, you know, when New York was being being attacked by Thanos' people? Where was where were the X-Men? Where were the mutants? You know, where was Daredevil? Where were all these people, right? So people, fans have been asking those questions all along. So where were they? Were they in hiding? I don't know. I think the best way to have brought the, I always said the best way to bring mutants into it was to have given Scarlet Witch the ability to say, you know, People were always saying, well, you know, the House of M, no more mutants, right? That whole no more. I always said, well, what if she already said no more mutants before? You know, maybe she said no more mutants at some other point in her life. And then we get a flashback or some kind of a story arc that shows us that, her saying that. And that's why the mutants, Professor X, Magneto, all these mutants have been out of our, out of the public eye, out of our consciousness for all these years. And they didn't, they did they obviously didn't listen to the comic doctor, right? But I always thought that would have been a good way of, of bringing the mutants into it. They didn't do that. Yeah. Submariner called himself a mutant in Black Panther too. Yes. They, they, well, they, once they got the rights to, uh, uh, to, once the Fox moved over to Disney or when Disney finally acquired the Fox, uh, um, company, 20th Century Fox, and all the all the X Men that came along with it. Then they started, you know, playing around with that whole word mutant. But <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever seen the Avengers, um, sorry, the Iron Man post credit scene with uh, with Tony Stark and uh, Sam Jackson as Nick Fury. <clears throat> the first take on that, he actually talks about spiders, radioactive spiders, and mutants. He, t- he actually says those, but. At that time, when Iron Man came out, Sony and Marvel were not in bed together. I mean, sorry, Sony and Disney were not in bed together yet. And and they did not have the rights to say the word mutant. So they took it out completely. Um, But now they do have that. So they're going to start using it. Anthony also says, I would like to see more Submariner in the, I guess it's MCU, maybe Defenders team up. Oh, a real Defenders? That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing to see that. Um, yeah, so, you know, Anthony, that, that, that's interesting. He's going to kill off the Marvel Universe, which is why we're getting all of them back. That is pretty interesting to see, to, 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 to think about. Um, I'm wondering, though, if, he, if they're going to do even more than that. They're going to kind of fix... Right, they're probably not going to. That's wishful thinking. Wishful thinking to think that the Deadpool will go back and fix the mistakes of all the movies from the last phase, which he could do, you know. Um, doubtful. Doubtful. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think that means? The the 
effing irresponsible hero Deadpool will change the history of the MCU with Wolverine. Do you agree with Sam? It's just more bullshit. More, yeah, they're going to change the MCU forever. Yeah, it's all it's all going to change with this next movie. And then, of course, nothing really changes. Is that is it, is it, is it another, another bait and switch situation here where, yeah, come and see it? Or, or... Is, Mar- is, is Kevin Feige and Marvel finally going to use, I shouldn't say finally, just going to use Deadpool as a tool to clean up any loose ends, uh, crappy storylines, um, crappy casting, whatever. I want to see him shoot. I talked about Taskmaster, the very first comic I showed today. Maybe, maybe he'll go back and kill the Taskmaster from the Black Widow movie. How would you feel? How would you feel if Deadpool actually goes back and joins in and changes and changes stuff that took place during the Infinity Saga? People, you know, people really do love Endgame and Infinity War. What do you, do you would you be mad if Deadpool went back and played around with stuff there? Would you be mad if you know, he saves Black Widow from dying and he gets thrown out over instead, but he's Deadpool. He comes back to life again. Something corny like that. Wouldn't that, you know, belittle the movie if he goes back and saves Black Widow or saves Tony Stark's Iron Man and brings, you know, uh, Robert Downey's Iron Man back or whatever. Like, Because if, if Deadpool put on the glove and did that, he, he'd, you know, probably be like turned into a crisp, but he'd just regenerate, right? Hell, Juggernaut ripped him in half and he just... He, Grew new legs and other appendages and things. Um, Bad Ombre says he will he will get a hold of the Infinity Gauntlet and snap dead all the crappy characters. See, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> I would really appreciate that. Give me that. And he'd kill off all the bad, bad characters we've seen. And there have been many. The entire Eternals team, pff, dead. You know, uh, again, that bla- the, uh, the uh, we, we, there's so many. Ghost, gone. From, from, you know, Ant-Man. She was terrible. Get rid of, uh, you know, many, you know, Kang. Maybe he'll fix Kang because Kang is all messed up right now too with that whole Jonathan Majors being fired and now the whole Kang series, the whole Kang saga is uh, being put on the back shelf. <laughs> Anthony C. says, that's a lot of characters, LOL, and movies. Yes, I would agree with you. I don't know how much time. Maybe it's a four-hour film. Actually, did I hear something? No, they don't have run times yet. They don't, they don't have run times yet, so I can't say. All I know, it's going to be, if it's Ryan Reynolds, I'm sure it's going to be quite funny, at least, at the very least. James says, the MCU is dead. Long live the DCU. The DCU is dead. You talk about the new DCEU that's coming about? Have you guys seen the casting for Supergirl? Check this out. See if I can find it. Well, I don't know if I can find it or not. Uh, can I bring that in here? I don't think I can bring it in here. Have you guys heard that they are bringing in um, the young lady who played ooh, Rhaenerys, the young Rhaenerys in uh, Game of Thrones? Uh, not Game of Thrones. What do you call it? The dragons, it's the sequel or the prequel to Game of Thrones. The young, the young Rhaenerys, she was just cast today as Supergirl. Now she was up against someone else who and they're both blonde, they're both fair skinned. You know, the other girl who was up for it, I, I don't know the actress's name who was up for it. She suited, she suited Supergirl. She was very, you know, traditionally attractive and whatever. This young lady who plays um, the young. Uh, did I say Daenerys? I hope I didn't say it. it's not Daenerys. What's her name on the show? Renera. Renera. Sorry, Renera. Uh, that actress, I forget her name. She actually looks uh, quite quite interesting as Supergirl. I kind of like that she's not just a drop dead blonde bombshell. You know, I don't want a Margot Robbie as Supergirl, right? I prefer someone a little more interesting. And the House of Dragons. Thanks, Roger. She's not. She's not. You know. How can I, she's not unattractive, but she's not the typical blonde bombshell. You know, she's not a she's not a Helen Slater. You know, like we talked about Helen Slater on my Supergirl episode. So this young lady, I I thought that was a pretty interesting casting, and she's a good actress. So I think that's going to be something to definitely look at. And I agree, um, Anthony. The casting looks fantastic. Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll go over the casting on an upcoming show of the new Superman Legacy show because I love the casting. Um, the dude, I don't know any of their names. The dude who's playing Superman, Clark Kent, really is a younger carbon copy of Henry Cavill. 
he looks like Henry Cavill, just a little little thinner and a little younger. And of course, I get names, forget it. The lady who plays uh, from uh, the, the, the uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel, the lead, perfect Lo- Lois Lane. Perfect Lois Lane. Sorry. Love it. I heard someone say they hated her in that role. That to me was perfect. And then, um, and the kid playing uh, Jimmy Olsen as well. He's from um, the Je- the Righteous Gem. Anybody watch the Righteous Gemstones? And if you don't watch the Righteous Gemstones, what are you waiting for? It's freaking hilarious. Um, yeah, uh, check that out. It, it, he he's he's perfect. He looks like Jimmy Olsen, man. Perfect, perfect. Anthony Miller says Corn Sweet Sweat. Corn Sweet is that her name? I'm not even sure. Let's see. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Google. Supergirl cast. Um, no, it's uh, Miley Alcock or Millie or Miley Alcock is playing Supergirl. She's she's going to be good. She is going to be really, really good. She reminds me, she kind of reminds me of, because she's smaller, she's not a big, strong, big girl. She kind of reminds me of the version of Supergirl we got, again, I'll bring it up, I brought it up before, in Justice League Unlimited, the cartoon, the Warner Brothers cartoon. And I love Supergirl in that as well, too. Or Corn, corn Sweet. Corn Sweat or Corn, it's corn Sweat? What a weird name. I think you know, maybe his agent should have changed that. Thank you. Corn Sweat is Superman. Yeah, I, I can actually tell you some of the cast right now. Superman cast right now. I can tell you it's, you can look them up as well. Yeah. uh, Images. Oh yeah. And then Lex Luthor is being played by the, uh, the new beast. I'm terrible with names right now. Um, Yeah, it's going to be good. There's no names here. I don't have the names here for some reason. Oh, here he is. David Korn. Corin Corin Sweat Corin Sweat plays Superman. Rachel Brosnahan will play Lois Lane. Millie Alcock will play Kara Zor-El. Nathan Fillion is Guy Gardner. Okay, that's good. Nathan Fillion is Guy Gardner. Beautiful. That's gonna be great. I'm actually on a page right now. Okay, get lost. Um, yeah, she's good. Yeah, it has great Guy Gardner. Uh, Mr. Terrific is Edie Gathegi. Don't know who he is. Isabel Merced plays Hawk Girl. She that looks okay to me. And then they don't have the guy playing the dude who plays Lex Luthor, but he's excellent too. He's the guy again who plays um he's the dude who played um uh the beast, the younger beast in uh in the in the um X-Men franchise. You saw him featured prominently in the Days of Future Past uh film. So looking forward to that. Anyways, guys. Lots to talk about in regards to these movies. I really do think when the movies are thriving and they're healthy and we're excited to get to the movie theaters and talk about what we saw at the movie theaters with each other at the at our local comic shops or here online, it just, I don't know. Again, it doesn't mean the comics are going to sell them any better or the prices are necessarily going to go up, but it certainly puts a lot more attention to our hobby, brings new people to the hobby, and it gets things moving and shaking. When, you know, when things start sucking, you know, we just start getting really negative, and that really sucks. All we need now is Jason Momoa as Lobo, and I got a feeling we're—I have a feeling we're gonna—we're gonna see that. I have a feeling we're gonna see that. Well, listen, guys, that's it for me. I sure hope you enjoyed the show. It was a pretty quick one tonight. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button and subscribe button, all that sort of thing. I certainly appreciate that. I am—I will be back with a uh, another episode of uh, of one on one pretty soon. I've got a couple of, well, I'll just tell you right up. I, I've been talking to um, Steve Borak, the uh, the former, uh, one of the former, I guess, CEOs of CGC, one of the founders of CGCs, CGC and the founder of CBCS. Um, I wanted to bring him on the show. I was, I've talked to him last week. Really nice guy. The guy's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to uh, the history of comic books and the hobby in itself. And even as the hobby transitioned into into what it is today with, you know, third, uh, third party grading and why he felt there was a need for that. So I'm really looking forward to him coming on the show. And that is slated for February the 8th. I just got to confirm it up with him again. And then, uh, so be sure to, to, to keep that in the back of your mind. They'll be doing that. And again, a lot of other interesting fellas I'm working on bringing on the show as well. So until then, my friends, until next Tuesday with another, another big unboxing coming next Tuesday. So you don't want to miss that. 
Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll talk to you very, very, very soon. Bye for now.